All right. So, the Tetzel worm, which is today's cryptid, is not what I thought it looked like. <coughs> I thought it was going to be just like giant snake. It is not giant snake. I mean, it's snake-like, but it is not giant snake. Um, it is part snake, part uh, cat. And I'll oh. read its wiki in a second, but I I need to hide this image from you guys. So I'm going to zoom in. Here are some pictures I found of the Tetzel worm. I found a third one that I need to draw both of your, your attentions to, Mike and David, because you're not is... ready for what this picture looks like. All right, all I can say about number two is that it is such a D&D &D monster. It really is. If it's not in a D and D monster manual, then I will be quite surprised. All right, you ready, Mikey, to see this? Sure. Here it is. What the? It's a footstools. <laughs> it's just like an eel. Look at this little hot dog. <laughs> it just looks like an eel to me. <laughs> I know. It's got little feet. It's here and I know really they designed. Is it a worm if it has feet? I don't know. I, I think the I think the I think the defining trait of a worm is its lack of feet. <laughs> I know. Well it's worm with a U, so it's like worm is in dragon, but Oh, so it's like that thing from uh Adventure Time. <laughs> yeah. The po <laughs> the poots on newts thing. Yeah, yeah. The newt. It's basically just a newt. <laughs> We make sure that our monsters here are aerodynamically designed so they can leap at you faster. You can fire it out of a cannon! Why am I speaking Irish? From the looks of they things, it's German. They can double as a torpedo. It looks like, it looks like it's a German creature. Uh, hold on. I actually have to like this read the thing about it now while you look at... No, no, I, I know exactly what this is. This is what a torpedo weapon in Scorn would look like. <laughs> Out of the missile launcher is a Tesla worm. It's a hot dog with a face. <laughs> yep. Amazing. That is born all over. Okay, it is. It is in Germany. Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Italy, Italy, and several other places in the European Alps. All right. So here is what the Tesla worm uh, is according to the cryptid wiki. So I went specifically to the cryptid wiki for this one. Tetzel worm, also called an Alps dragon, is a cryptid reported in several areas in Europe, including Germany, Austria, Switzerland, Italy, and many other places in the European Alps for hundreds of years. It has several regional names, including the Stolen Worm, the Spring Worm, Arassus, Pratzel Worm, and, oh boy, and Bergstusen. Bergstusen. Pretzel Worm, Pretzel Worm. Folded into a tasty snack. <laughs> Uh, reports of this creature vary in description from a serpentine reptile or amphibian to a feline chimera to something resembling a small Asian dragon. Like that one over there. Which is funny. So I guess this just goes to show, you know, cultures hopping over spaces and blending their critters together sometimes. So that's cool. Um, the most common description of is of a lizard slash snake like creature with a stubby appearance, two front legs with no hind legs, completely covered in scales, and a cat like face. The Tetzel worm is also believed to be dangerously venomous, able to kill a human instantly with its bite, breathing poisonous fumes, and even possessing acidic blood. Neat. It's alien. It's the alien. It's the alien, but cuter. Uh, the earliest documented encounter with a Tetzel worm took place in, in 19, uh, sorry, not 19, 1779, when two of these creatures appeared in front of a man named Hans, F Hans, Hans? no, in the last name, it's spelled F-U-C-H-S, but I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Fox. Hans Fox? Hans Fox? <laughs> oh, I uh, know him very well. <laughs> Oh my god. Badly frightened by his encounter, Hans suffered a fatal heart attack. However, before he died, he was able to tell his family of his encounter. He described the creature as a five to seven foot as, as five to seven feet in length, with a snake-like body, clawed front legs, and a large feline head with sharp teeth. In 1828, so like a good almost hundred years after that, 
a peasant supposedly found the corpse of a tessel worm, which by the time he had managed to bring it home, crows had apparently eaten half of the creature. Even so, the tessel worm, like, I mean, how badly do you have to be carrying it home for crows to just be eating it as you're carrying it along? Oh no, I have died of shock from my heart attack. But anyway, let me make sure but you first, get my... But first, let me describe this. <laughs> yes. Uh, it had... No, it's okay, go ahead. It also had toxic blood, toxic fumes, all these things, but it is the look of it is what killed me. There's so many stories about this thing. So, let's see. Uh, it is now believed that even if this creature did actually exist, that because sightings are so rare now, it, it may be completely extinct. Okay. So let's see. I'm not going to read all of these. There's so many, but I will tell you the dates of them and then I'll read the most recent. Uh, there's an incident in 1954 uh, where a guy took a photo. Um, there's a bunch of them that don't have dates, including one that where a girl like bumped into it in the woods and it glared at her while it was eating a fish and she went ee and ran away. Uh, July 1883 or 84... A guy named Casper Arnold saw it, uh, and it jumped nine feet in the air. There was a 1924 incident, a 1934 incident, a 1990 incident, uh, one in the 1960s for some reason. It's out of, out of order there. Uh, 1970, 2000, and the most recent one is 2009. 2009, many reports were made in the Tre oh my God, Trecivio area of Italy near the Swiss border. Authorities chalked up most of the reports to, quote, missing monitor lizards that had escaped their masters. Some of the sightings were even said to be of raptor dinosaurs. Only the oldest residents of Trecivo called the mysterious creatures by the name they had always known them as, Bal oh my God, Basilisco, Basilisk, uh, which is the Italian name for the tetzel worm. But tetzel worm sightings have continued to the present day, and German cryptozoologist researcher Ulrich Magian has published several articles and his own magazine uh, called Bilk, which documents them. And then there's just a whole bunch of speculation on what it could be. So. Hello, Ferb. Ferb is here. Ferb says it's worm time. It is worm time. Hey, Alex. Yes? There's a picture here that someone took of it in 2022. Oh, there's, oh, there's one from now? Where is it? I put in the chat garbage. You got my hopes up. It's a sock puppet. <laughs> it's what the last one looks like. I know. I know. But it still looks like a little hot dog with feet. And a little goofy face. <laughs> it's really cute. So I like, I love these different depictions of it. And I love that people keep seeing it. I love that it's also apparently the basilisk, even though as far as I'm aware, basilisk does not look like uh, like that at all. <laughs> oh. I've heard that it's meant to be like a lizard that can, you know, basically yeah. make you into stone. Yeah, it turns you into stone or paralyzes you with its either its breath or its eyes. And the tetzel worm doesn't seem to do that. It seems like it's just poisonous and scary. Ferb says Tetzel Worm is a sock <laughs> puppet with mange. Confirmed. <laughs> oh, I There's should grab a, a reference of a cat and a reference of a snake. Let's get a pretty kitty picture. <gasps> should I use my own cat? I should I use, use my own, own cat. cat. Hold on. Give me half a second. They would I have be to insulted look, if you didn't. I have to look through my phone and find a good picture of my cat. Maybe the one where she was in her little pumpkin Halloween costume from last year. That one might be good. Give me one second. I have to flip through my images. Oh, there's all the pictures from the fair where I, ju I just live blogged all the fancy pigeons. Yes. There's pictures of Bourbon, who is a good boy, but he doesn't get to be the reference this time. Only CC gets to. Only CC. Only the CC gets to. Let me see. Hold on. Scrolling, scrolling, okay. scrolling. It's just looping around again for some reason. What the flying fuck? Come on, man. 
It really is just looping around. Okay, hold on. I'll just go into the photo app itself. There we go. Making me scroll for an infinite amount of time. Stupid thing. There's that cat we saved that one time. Here's my <coughs> cat, but not a good picture. There's the one! Share. Come on. Stupid phone. Sharing to Discord. Put it in here. And share it. <laughs> Fucking nuisance. There we go. God. That took so long! Why did that take so long to do? And why isn't it popping up? Technology is... Technology, please! Phone! Where, where is cat? Oh my god, it didn't link it. Why? What is going on? Share. S create a link. Is that better? There we go. Jesus. I'll share it with myself. Save the grief. Paste. There. Oh my god. There she is. There's the cat. Let me copy image. Please. Or not. Oh my goodness. Please, just let me copy my own image. Thank you. Lord. Why do you test me? There she is. <laughs> In her pumpkin outfit. She will be our cat. Looking affronted. Now I need a good picture of a... Cool snake. That looks like a cute snake. This will be our cute snake. Dude, he little. Here we are. Thank you, Ferb. I think she's very cute, too. Cece is a silly kitty. Don't want that to be that. might end up being one of my favorite cryptids. I did not know that it was it was cat snake. A snack. Like a dog. Snack. <laughs> just so the image is easy. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. I love the picture of her in that little costume. I'm so surprised she let me put it on her. She seemed to be okay with it. I didn't expect her to be, which is what's so funny. <laughs> Shit. Sorry. No, it's okay. You've probably got a pretty nasty cold or you've got the flu. But at least we know you don't have the the, the Rona. Make it wrinkly. No, I can't. I can't make my cat. You have to. I, I do. You have to make it wrinkly. The snake body must be wrinkle. Dang it, Bobby. Why do you have to make it wrinkly? I don't know, Dad. I'm sorry. I can't. I do don't a know, really Dad. Great, Bobby Hill impression. You do better than I do. Mike does an excellent Bobby Hill impression. Whoa! That's not Bobby Hill. That's Hank. I can't do. What do you mean? I can do a great Bobby Hill impression. I, I can't. You've done it before, though. Or is oh, that your? I can't, Dad. No, I can't do it. <laughs> oh, maybe it's your sister I'm thinking of. My my sister and my mom can do really good Bobby Hill impressions. I'm good at doing Dale. I can do Dale, and I'm decent at Hank. I've heard you can do a good impersonation of me. 
Much like the CIA did back in the 90s. Yeah, David's really good at it, too. Yeah, I'll it, be it. the judge of that. I'll be one the judge enough. of that. You don't, one person. you don't know what you're talking about. Only the CIA does. No, they don't, because they're part of the, of the U.S. government. They're part of the conspiracy against me and my family in an effort to make sure that all exterminators like myself do not learn the true way of how they control the fire ant population. With tiny microchips. They're all... They're fire all tiny ants work for the bourgeoisie. Edgar Hoover. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. They say he died. He didn't. He's just in carbonation along with Elvis. Hidden inside the dam. No, Mount Rushmore. <laughs> Mount Rushmore. Oh my god. I was listening, actually, funnily enough, to cults, cryptids, and conspiracies this morning. I was listening to a... Um, an older episode, but still fairly recent. It's called The Burger of Tomorrow, in which uh, Chelsea <laughs> was doing a, um, a, like, a little reading of how she discovered that, uh, that a thing going on in, uh, in friggin', um, oh, what's the name of those crazy people on Reddit? The crazy... QAnon? One. Yeah, QAnon. There we go. How, uh, how, uh, I know there's more than one, and that's the sad part. It's amazing I figured that on the first try. <laughs> it is. That was a lucky guess because there's a lot of crazy people on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but one of their things is that they were saying that Bob's Burgers has like secret messages in there preparing us for the future. Even though. No. Um, <laughs> but. Why do her front legs look weird? What am I doing? What is this? First it was the Simpsons. Now it's Bob's Burgers. Where will the lies end? Uh, but, uh, she started talking about people seeing, uh, patterns in things and the best way to talk to, uh, you know, the best way to get a person off of a terrible conspiracy is to just leave them to their own devices away from the group where the conspiracy came from and they'll stop. These legs are so f <laughs> Why can I not do cat legs this morning? <laughs> and by this morning, I mean this afternoon. Jesus. I need a picture of a sitting cat. Beware of Yeezy. Oh, he's crazy. Okay, there we go. They're legs. There be legs. But, um... She was talking about how some people have been, uh have been, like, offering up greater conspiracies in the face of their conspiracy to get them to do things that are just, like, basically taking care of themselves, like, to give them the COVID vaccine instead of when they're like, oh, it's all about to putting, like, a chip in in our arm or uh, tracking us or whatever and then be like, ah, well, you know, I heard that it's actually a ploy by the Chinese government to get us to not take the vaccine so that our population will drop. <laughs> and... And um, and her 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 co-host was like, you know, as funny as that sounds, and as much as it may work, giving them a worse conspiracy that they'll probably believe is not the way to do this. Just don't let them talk in those chat rooms anymore, and they will they'll figure themselves out. But the Chinese. Oh my lord. No Dale. Uh, but I've heard people do that before, like when people are like, oh, the moon landing is fake. <laughs> you believe the moon is real? You believe that Neil Armstrong really existed? Buzz Aldrin was really just a randroid. That's why they called him Buzz. <laughs> That's pretty good, actually. <laughs> You know, nobody ever talks about the third guy who was in the spaceship. That's because he was off gallivanting with his other aliens' friends. 
Yeah. Not there for their... That was not the first time they were on the moon. That was their regular reconnoiter. How'd you think we ended up with the microchip so gosh darn quickly? It was an exchange. They wanted golf clubs in exchange for the microchip. No, it wasn't golf clubs. They wanted Elvis. We gave them to them. <laughs> uh, amazing. God. Yeah, Ferb goes, yeah, now people don't believe in the moon for real. Yeah. <laughs> the real question is, what is the moon? Cheese. Diabolical. Moon's made of green cheese. No, not made of it. It's just we <laughs> ran out of... Move on. We just, it's just we ran out of... Uh, we ran, ran out of room in our underground cheese mines to dump the cheese, so we've been sending it to the moon. Cheese is just the underlayer. And then it's we were really and then we were too embarrassed to admit to everybody about the cheese problem. So we just were like, oh no, that's the moon, it's always been there. Abraham Lincoln, he originally founded a secret society. Where that was based inside the moon. They hauled out the car. And then they were made the foundation with cheese. Because that in space it always stays cold and solid. So the cheese is made the perfect foundation. Order a ton of cheese. And no one's going to suspect you're building a secret base on the moon. You know, order a ton of cement and all that brick and mortar. They're going to know something's up. But cheese, that's how you get around it. If for if for his is uh, talking about the actual creation of the moon, because a Mars-sized planet crashed into to newly formed baby Earth, and the debris created a new thing. Yes, and it was done in this in a matter of hours. Yeah, uh, a a computer mo like huge computer model experiment recently confirmed that uh, the moon was formed in a matter of hours, not days. Didn't it also it confirm that it was it was uh, later than we originally thought? Not like a ton I, later, but it was like, no, it's it's relatively more recent than mm, what we I don't thought. remember reading anything about it. Here's a really crazy one for you, too. Mm -hmm. We are on two planets, not one. Oh. There's a theory that what was originally Earth crashed into another planetoid, and they just sort of combined together. Yes, I have heard that. That, uh, that chances are we were two planetoids that slammed into one another and kind of merged. And Pluto is upset that it doesn't get counted as a planet anymore. Imagine no one even knows you fucking existed. I didn't mean to click that. There we go. There was another planet much like Earth once. It's called Earth or Girth or something like that. Some we never made need to made up a word for it because we were never there while it was there. It's like Pangea. <laughs> Ferb says Pluto will always be a planet in my heart. Yeah, same. No. He's an honorary well, little you be prepared, you, you better be prepared <laughs> to consider Ceres a, a planet, too, because... Uh, I and, do! And several of the moons orbiting Jupiter and Saturn, because yeah, some sure, of them are not? bigger than Pluto. Yeah, why not? Why can't a planet orbit another planet? Because that would be a moon! <laughs> <laughs> but Pluto's not we... things, you fool. But Pluto's not orbiting another well, planet. A good... Well, here's a good question for you, Michael. Furb is shouting everything is a planet. Moon's orbiting the sun. A planet is is what? That but a sun isn't a planet. So if something is orbiting the sun, it doesn't make it a moon. <laughs> <laughs> what if the sun is a planet and we have been lied to the entire time? How are you going to feel? The globalist then? agenda. Ferb is chanting everything is a planet. Planet. Sun. Planet. <laughs> but imagine if that had actually happened. Like all of a sudden for some reason we had to classify the sun as a planet. And now we, like it's... Well if celestial bodies or ordering, or orbiting other uh, 
planets or things to okay if a planet is a celestial body that isn't a, isn't an asteroid that orbits the sun and a moon is another celestial body that is orbiting a planet and not the sun then pluto would still be a planet because it's not orbiting another planet ooh that's a weirdly well, scary. It's a fascinating topic, Alex. Interesting that no one is calling Pluto a moon. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a planetoid. It just means it's a planet that's pretty small. Yes, you know that's it's a that's little an interesting one. thought. I've, that's an interesting <laughs> thought I've had just now. Imagine, if you will, a planet that is not going around a sun at all. It's just free floating. Space. Yes, it's called a rogue planet. Yep. That is that is a thing. Also, Cybertron. Cybertron is a rogue planet. Yes. In its in its uh, mythology. Um. And and uh, I mean, I don't know if we've ever actually visually confirmed a rogue planet. That would be terrifying. Uh. But we... they yes they more than likely do exist. Yep. We have rogue That's... black holes also. You could be going into dark space for millions of years and never be able to get out of it. Yes. Pretty much, yeah. I mean... And, and also consider this. Consider this, David. Dark space is so vast that you're actually more likely you'll never enter the orbit of a sun again. Yep. You, you will, more than likely, a rogue planet will wander forever. Forever in dark space now another All thing the gods will want to gather to there <laughs> another thing that's fun about space specifically about our galaxy uh is at the center of every galaxy is a super massive black hole and for a long time scientists assumed that ours was not absorbing matter for some reason this is incorrect it is and we are slowly circling it and eventually bajillions of years from now we will get eaten by the black hole oh my god the end is nigh uh, i don't know about that i think it depends on your proximity to the galactic center i thought that we were slowly getting pulled towards it but not at like any amount that we will live to see yeah that's I mean, not we, how we, gravity we... works don't bug, bug, uh, black oh, we're holes just get bigger with time anyway. Black holes are weird. Is that before or after the sun becomes a red, red dwarf? Oh, it would be way after if it happened at all. Yeah, we're, we're totally going to be dead before We that will be so <laughs> long gone. Any species after us will have no evidence whatsoever our planet was even there. So, that's how long that will be. Um, no, we are not... We are not going to fall into the... Oh, we're we're nice and moored where we are? You'd have to be really freaking close. Okay, I thought that we were slowly getting pulled in, and that's why we were a nice spiral shape, but... No. I was incorrect. Uh, we're a spiral shape because of the way that matter and mass is distributed. It's complicated. There's all sorts of computer models. The Remember that spiral galaxies aren't the only shape. There are galaxies that are larger than us that are called elliptical galaxies. This is true. and then there's It just the... has to do with how matter is distributed. And then there's the Sombrero Galaxy that has a nice little hat. <laughs> um, though, I, I believe scientists are starting to question the models that we are using, um, because I think they've discovered nearby uh, galaxies that, don't... that really don't line up with the current theory as to how galaxies form. Hooray! More new stuff so... we didn't know! That's the yeah, fun right. thing about science. It's not that you were wrong, it's that there's a cool new thing you can find out. It's like, ooh, hold so on a minute. Oh, I didn't realize that. So are a lot of our pictures of galaxies just computer models? Um, we have photos pictures of them. Pictures of galaxies? No. But our, our <laughs> understanding of how galaxies form is, is largely via computer model, because we understand how physics works. For yeah. the most part. Okay. I mean, we do have some long distance photos of them, but nothing that's like that nice close up thing. It's more the, like it's more like that smudge right there. You well, I mean, in order to actually record a galaxy formation, you would have to like record it for billions of years, right? So Oh, I didn't mean the formation. I'm sorry. I thought I, I, I meant the galaxy itself. Yes, we have I'm pictures. referring I'm 
I understand. I wasn't saying that you were saying that. I, I was responding to what David was asking in reference to the discussion on uh, how, how we model galaxy formation. Okay. I misunderstood. We have, we have to model it because the timetable is just so fucking It's so big. insane. Yeah. Yes. And we can only <laughs> see so far back. Large. Yeah, we can yeah, only see so far back in time see. through a telescope. Yeah. We must be able to see things like the Andromeda Galaxy and several others, but we've never seen the Milky Way, have we? From the outside. No. No. But that would not be possible. we can hazard a guess based on, like Mike said, computer models and the things that we can see of our own. Didn't we get a picture of our own black hole? Didn't we pe sneak our, a peek? Our own yeah, we got hole. something like that. Yeah. Was that the one that we got a picture of or was that a different one? Well, what do you mean by our own black hole? The do you mean supermassive the, black hole? The one that's in our our galaxy, yes. Yeah, was we got that a the one we got a picture hole, of. It? Like, I mean, or was it just I mean, a black hole. Okay, there are multiple black holes in the galaxy. I have to. I I, I just need to say this because okay. I'm confused what? as to what you mean. What? Okay, the picture of the black hole that we got is it yes. one that was in our galaxy or in a yes. different one? Okay, that's what in I wanted to know. It's, yeah. it's I don't I don't think it's the supermassive black hole because. Okay. Actually, it's not confirmed if there is actually just a single large oh, black or hole if in the there's like of the galaxy, or if it's just tons, a lot of them. Tons of them floating around each other. Yeah, we, we don't. I mean, that would be cool. It's not, it has not been directly confirmed. Though, it's, it's the theory. It's, so, it's the theory. now here's a fun question. If a black <laughs> hole floated up to another black hole, would that be like flipping a bag of holding inside out? No. Would We've they actually just... observed this. Oh, well, they then what happens to them? Absorb. One will absorb the other. And oh, it will. Be they, it's infinite mass, because you, you, so you can't really add any mass to it, because it's infinite. Ah, so, but, it's, uh, so one of them just kind of blinks out of existence then. I see. Yeah, we've actually, there's actually, uh, you, I, I can share it with you, but we actually recorded uh, the electromagnetic waves of two black holes colliding. Cool. It doesn't sound as, it, it, it it doesn't really sound that impressive. <laughs> oh, is it just like a little and then one it, is gone? It, it literally sounds like this. Oh. <laughs> it literally made oh, a so, it yeah, literally made it, a it, troop noise. It sounds like a person going <laughs> <laughs> It's it <laughs> was really <laughs> underwhelming. <laughs> Too. Like, 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 as a sound designer, I'm like, oh, that has to be improved. There's no way I would ship this. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's like when you hear like a T-Rex growl. Oh, where it's just it's all yeah. bass and then it honks like oh. a goose. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Actually, honestly, the the passive sounds of a T-Rex are more terrifying. Yes, because it's like it's like a uh, it's like because an it's alligator, mumble. but it's more so. Sub it's subtonal rumbles, so yeah. you would actually feel it travel through the air and ground. <laughs> yeah, but so it doesn't sound away. good on DVD. <laughs> yeah, it does, yeah, it doesn't sound good on DVD, unfortunately. <laughs> Firm quoted me and said it's all bass and then goose. Yep, pretty much. Now the bass boosted goose. Yeah. Now the so only the only way, really quick, that the black hole sound would have been more entertaining for me is if it is if it like made a little squeaky fart noise, and that's what the sound it made. Uh, if you like, want squeaky fart noises, uh, you'll have to find you have to find the uh, the EM recording of a black hole ejecting. Uh, yes, spitting out mass. It does kind of sound like that. Uh, <laughs> it, it, well, it sounds like a whing at first, and then it sounds like the shriek of the damned. Oh yeah, you're, you're hearing the mess of uh, of frequencies of the gamma ray that's shot out of it. Isn't that how? Isn't that one of the ways a black hole can die? Is if it ejects a certain kind of matter. No. I, God, I wish I could remember the name of the particle, but this is what was in the my theory. Textbook. The theory is that they can. We don't know if this is the case because, again, like you can model it all you want. But yeah, but you know, you're assuming you'll that you the parameters to... that you're using for the model account for all the parameters that exist in real yeah. life. Uh, but the current theory, based on models, is uh, they could potentially. Uh, like shrivel up and die. Yeah, one of the one of the, um, the theories because it has to it has to do with like virtual particles and and like how how yeah. they can pop in and out of existence. Yes, that's what it was. That's I was trying to remember the name of the particle. It's a virtual particle. It's a particle that can pop in and out of existence and replicate itself. And it was something like, oh, if if the black hole did that, it would have created new matter, and that is the end of the black hole. 
it it shrivels up and dies after well, that. Well, we don't know if it cre- if that process will create new matter. We have no idea. Oh, I know. That's how it was phrased in the book. Again, this is the just time, like a the, 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 theory that like was there. The, the timetables that exist for a lot of this stuff is so unimaginably large. There's no way like, we could ever see it. Like it is, in, I think the human brain it is literally an incomprehensible amount of time. We actually just don't have words to describe how long some of this will take. And isn't that yeah, fucking cool? Our brains aren't wired right. Like I can't imagine what. I mean, like, we can't perceive time, so I mean, it's not helping. There are a lot, there's a lot of evidence to indicate that the human brain isn't wired <laughs> like, Well, put it this way. Uh, I'm lack trying to the, imagine... Uh, the lack of the 12-hour cut of the Dune movie proves this. <laughs> yes. I was, I was trying to <laughs> comprehend today what a 50-foot-tall robot would be, or a 60-foot-tall robot. I was trying to, like, weigh that out, and I just couldn't really do That's it That's 10 of you. I had to visualize it. Yeah, but it's so weird. Like six inches is not a lot, but you see, like a five, a five foot, like a six foot two man standing next to a five foot eight man. And it seems and it like looks a lot Titanic. More it yeah, yeah, but it's really not. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's one of those weird things. Oh, Ferb says I've been. The space is really cool, but don't put me up there. I've been doing fun readings on the creation of Earth and the development of early life, and I honestly can't pop- properly comprehend that scientists have four billion old year billion year old rocks in their possession. Yeah. Oh, I never sent the tweet. Tweet going. Technically, you live. Shh, don't worry, I got this. I'm fixing the problem. I'm like all over the place today. You're a professional. Uh, speaking of professionalism, when you're when uh, we're done today, I I need your help in creating the Discord. Sure thing. Uh, because there are some things that I am unclear about, but uh, we can discuss that later. Okay, I will do my best. I love to that help. you're using your own cat as reference. I know. <laughs> like, what was I not going to? I love I finding like out weird shit about science, by the way, for, like, I think I've mentioned it before, like, the the life rock. I don't know what its actual name is, that's just what Ashley called it when she discovered it and then, like, flipped out, because to her it was the most terrifying thing she'd ever learned about life. Uh, but there's a there's a stone that, uh, that they, that it was like a meteorite or something that scientists found, and it's, all the building blocks contained within it indicate that it should be a life form, but it's not. It's a rock. But it contains all of the pieces that would make life happen. And it just isn't alive. And for some reason that was absolutely terrifying to her, and I'm sitting there and I'm like... But... I mean, I mean, but yes, well, but it it's it makes a, you wonder. It makes you wonder if it wasn't a rock at one time. Yeah, I mean, I'm like, I'm like, well, maybe it came from something that wasn't a rock. Maybe, maybe but, it was like, maybe, maybe it was like a guy's butt. Like, like an alien's ass. Got, Another planet got like shattered or something, <laughs> and and that, that guy's maybe. ass has just been hurling through yeah. space. Well, maybe, or maybe it's just all the pieces, but they haven't been assembled into a life form, and thus it's not alive. I mean, we're mostly carbon, but that doesn't mean a dying. I like my alive. theory better. That it's a butt. Yeah, I like I like my theory better. I, I like to think that it's an alien butt that hurtled through space and landed on Earth, because maybe you know that would like okay if you think about the history of humanity, okay. Mm-hmm. How many times have we discovered something and we're like, oh my god, this is so incredible. It, it must have been be it must have been this yeah, it must have been this like inc- this this immense work of art and then it turns out no, this is just uh, like a wall people shat on or something. Like like it's <laughs> it's it's just it's stuff like we have a tendency to assign higher meaning to things that we don't understand. I mean, that's so, a, yeah, so, that's a human flaw. So, you know, we're probably like, oh, you know, this is some kind of weird alien life that we've never encountered or oh this is evidence of panspermia or whatever no it's, it's just an alien butt like well, no. can you, you you can imagine hundreds of years from now when we're doing like intergalactic travel or not or, or uh, not intergalactic but interplanetary travel and we're like exploring the galaxy and we encounter like the survivors of this alien race and they're like no that's actually just our butt <laughs> Oh, you brought you brought a turd back. Okay, thanks. Why did you um, save her butt? <laughs> why, why did you present us with a a boob, you, a you fossilized just, boob? 
Why is why is our why is our fossilized butt in one of your museums? I don't understand <laughs> this. Well, <laughs> oh, you've displayed an ass. Well, that kind of fits in with your mo. Well, think consider this. I've seen your anime. <laughs> think of all the times that you have witnessed stupidity, and you've thought to yourselves, "How on earth did someone get to that conclusion?" Because our brain is just a, is just a, a an electrical current traveling inside a very wet meat pu puppet, and it can't be right all the, the time. Actual, the actual reason is because people uh, operate in intuitively, and human intuition is really bad because it's based <laughs> off of because people like human intuition is based off of taking uh, like it's based off of taking information. Uh, that you're seeing or like taking in somehow, and then making and, an assumption about it. But the problem is, is that the human brain doesn't like creating new neurons. Oh, and it's, so so yeah. you, your brain has a tendency to just channel thoughts or channel ideas or information down specific neural pathways that you use frequently. Yeah. So there's the. I mean, this is what confirmation bias is. This is why people have a tendency to. Like see something, like see something, and want to and associate it with something that they've experienced, right? Because it's just not possible to just will a new idea into existence. Yeah. Well, there's also a, a few. There's also some other things that are a bit of a problem in in that regard, for as far as how our brains work as well. Uh, the first being that, cert like you said, your brain doesn't like making new pathways, and there are certain conflicting uh, thoughts and emotions that travel the same pathway, like love and hate share the same mm -hmm. neural pathway because the emotion is obsession. And religious belief and sexual gratification actually yep. travel down the same pathways. Yes, they do. <laughs> Which maybe is why the so religion. So you get on your knees. For... <laughs> right. So. Getting on your knees for the Lord and getting on your knees for other reasons are more to the like than you think. <laughs> yep. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> um, there's, um, the other problem is that of all the information you take in, uh, your brain, your unconscious brain, uh, against probably your wishes, takes the vast majority of the information that you have brought in and throws it away. That's why a trip back to a familiar location seems much faster than a trip to a location you don't know, because your brain is just throwing out, like, 80% of the information that you are gathering as you drive home, because it's seen that house before. It's not important. Yeah. What was I going to say? Um, yes, the reason I brought up that particular Also thing... why uh, strangers' faces meld together. Yeah, and yeah. become a mass. It's also why there are no new faces in your dreams. It's only people you've seen before. So if you don't see a lot of people... Uh, individuals from your life and sometimes your family get cast in roles they should not have been in. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, what was I going to say? Um, <clears throat> uh, oh yeah. The reason I brought that up about, you know, humans and how they manage to, you know, think in ways that we really are incomprehensible to like, a, you know, logic. Just think of all the batshit insane things that people during the Roman era were doing. Like, you oh we haven't changed at like, all <laughs> yeah in that regard like just think of like the useless gadgets that you can get everywhere these days and imagine what kind of things the romans had that we will never understand because we will never be able to re replicate that amount of stupid well here's the thing here's the thing too about technology is every once in a while we forget that sometimes humans can be fucking brilliant like the like the robots that they built in um like, I, I forget if it was, like, if it's, I think it's, like, almost at the end of the Renaissance, or maybe it's a little farther on in the Not Industrial robots, Age. robots, but, yeah. Well, they may as well be. But they were things, no. like, tiny, tiny, so finely made little mechanical figurines with itty-bitty <laughs> watch size gears inside That's of them that could robot. write poems. That's not a robot. And just, like, looking at that is insane. Well, I mean, it's... It's not a robot. Well, there's there's technically something called Leonardo Leonardo da Vinci's a android I think or no, that's, not, that's not a robot. Pre whatever yeah, a pre, pre robot robot, robot. Pre okay. Robot. A it's proto a robot. robot. It's a proto bot. Yes, a proto bot, and they had all kinds of insanely complicated ones. Ones that wrote poems down. 
different ones as well. Like, it didn't write the same poem every time. It wrote a bunch of different poems every time. And they had, like, some that played chess. They had one that played chess super well, and then they found out it was actually just a dude hiding it's, in a box. It's What you're describing is an automaton. The difference between a robot and an automaton is an automaton just carries out, like, a like a function that it was made to, to do, where a okay, robot an is able to... automaton. Is able to follow programming, so you program it okay. to carry out a series of functions. An automaton. We have in the past built incredibly complicated automatons. Hmm. At a at, at a time period where you would not think that was even something we were we were wondering if we could make, but some people made it anyway. Yeah, Leonardo da Vinci made a tank. Well, he designed one. Yeah, it was a shit design, but yeah, it was a tank. I mean, well, he that, that's because the, the he was well. The shit design is also uh, is also uh, in. Um, oh, Taz. Uh, no. Uh, well, yes, but or it's Taz, in. Um, rather. Totally it's one of the mechs in Iron Harvest. Oh yeah, You're it kidding is. Me. That's I'm not hilarious. <laughs> they built that piece of shit. It's yeah. Funny. <laughs> totally accurate. Battle Simulator has it too. Yeah. I was gonna say it's in Assassin's Creed. I remember. Does it actually do... Does it actually, like, fight you? In that uh, one? No. I don't know. Didn't think so. No, you control it in Assassin's Creed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Assassin's Creed, I think it's Spin. Brotherhood. You do jobs on behalf of Da Vinci. Oh, yeah. yeah, you do. It's also revealed that Da Vinci, like... Either he invented or he, he like, contributed to the design of, uh, mod of the modified uh, uh, hidden blades. In, uh, yeah, universe, he's so, your like, cue. The hook, blade, the hook blade was developed by Leonardo da Vinci. As though you would have to be a genius to design a blade that can be a hook. He designed the version <laughs> of the blade that didn't cut your fingers off. To be fair, there's a lot more that goes into that shit than you might think. I know, but the, po I mean, the point being that if you, you don't need to be da Vinci to do that, though. If you have the technology to, to design a hidden blade... I feel like the step to doing a hook isn't that more complicated. <laughs> like, yeah. And I feel like you don't need one of the smartest people in, in human history. Yeah, I mean, frankly, it seems like, like that. that sort of project is kind of beneath him. Yeah. <laughs> if, we I mean, if we're being serious here. I mean, like, I think he was a quack. I think he had, like, really great ideas, uh, but I think he lucked into most of them. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> look. there's plenty I'm of not, other that's ideas. That's going a bit far, Michael. Like, Look. He actually made a working... Right, he couldn't get it to work because he didn't have the means at the time. But his flying machine legitimately works. The, the problem the problem being, like, I, I find it difficult to believe that you can purposely, like, intentionally design something functional when you have no way of, of obtaining actually the functional result. Like, like okay. what, what, I, what, I, what I mean by this, what I mean, let me clarify. What I mean by this is, he had no idea that the materials to cr to create this this functional glider were even possible. I'm not right? talking about the glider. I'm talking about the spinner, the one Same that's thing. like a proto helicopter. Same thing. Okay. If he, if, if he has if he has no idea that the that the materials necessary to make it are even real, like. I, I feel like you're just kind of lucking into it, you know? What do you call people who made rocket ships before they got to the moon? This is not the same thing? Because but... the materials that they planned to use existed already and did not have to be invented many, many years later, is what Mike is saying. Yeah. This is, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying that the person, the guy wasn't smart. I'm just saying that he lucked into that invention. <laughs> <laughs> because there was no way he could possibly have constructed it in order to see if he was correct and because then make adjustments will, based on that. Well, we, we pick and choose. We pick and choose the ones that work. He has a myriad of ones that don't work because he didn't have a firm understanding of physics at the time. Because no Nobody did. did. Yeah. Yeah. My, yes, so my that's... point is, is that, like, yeah, the guy was smart, but people, like, act like he was some kind of superhuman. <laughs> And forget no. that he failed more often than he succeeded, just like anybody else yeah. who's ever sat well, down to invent something. Just like any of It is, yeah. It is legit. It is a legitimate thing that you can say that he was smarter than most of the world at the time. 
Yes. I Mike's not saying that. he's not smart. He's just saying that he yeah. isn't this this inescapable genius that yeah, everybody people, is painting him out to like, be. People paint him to be such a genius that there are people who actually legitimately believe he was an alien. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. He like, he's drama. Like, yeah, yeah, he was just... Well, I mean, they were doing it as a joke. But yeah, like... Yeah. He was just the guy. <laughs> Yeah, he was a guy who was fairly intelligent, came up with some good designs, but like any other intelligent uh, inventor, most of his designs are things that would not work and could not work, like the he Bizarro of, tank. Uh, yeah, he was one of the most genius inventors of our time, much like Elon Musk. <sighs> Elon, unlike him, Elon has never actually designed anything on his own ever. He's just stolen actually, ideas from other people. That I not unironically made my eye twitch. <laughs> also it is also important to note that people like da vinci there's probably been other people way smarter than him but the one thing that da vinci had that they didn't is money people who mm -hmm. are very wealthy have the time to sit around and, th and putz away at things like that that's why free that's why i'm super pro free education because there are plenty of people out there with with passions and skills that they should be allowed to develop Hey, Roman! Roman is here. We're drawing the Tetzel worm. Part cat, part worm. worm. And by worm, we mean snake. <laughs> yeah, Roman. <coughs> I made the beans too fat. Four toes, not three. Well, it's a it's a it's a monstrous you know snake creature. You can give it how many toe beans you want. I don't want to give it the right amount of toe beans. His kitties are cute. Man, drawing this 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 supernatural version of my cat makes me want to just go and harass her. What is a snake but a scaly <laughs> worm? True. Hold on, I'm gonna harass my kitty. Wait. I would definitely have to say like of all Leonardo da Vinci's designs, like, that the like tank one is definitely. <laughs> something to behold okay i'm back i scratched her butt oh yeah it is <laughs> it is a majestic something that is for sure it is uh magical. he made it so overly complicated too like looking at it i wonder how the pilot is supposed to to operate well, it without getting sick i mean i mean so he designed okay i okay all right let's dissect da vinci's tank for a second oh boy yeah so he designed it. He designed it so that it could spin and fire a cannon on all sides. Right? Hello, Desarin. This is the Tetzel worm. It is part cat, part worm. Where are you? The problem that he was trying to tackle is the idea that when you're fully armored, you typically sacrifice vision, right? This we see this in in medieval armor of the time. So he's trying to solve this Modern. problem. And instead of doing what the simple pro or the simple solution would be, actually, this proves Da Vinci was an engineer by trade. Oh, because because he <laughs> finds the overly complicated solution to the problem. <laughs> so he's like, "We'll make the whole thing be able to spin." Because the human to, pilot won't vomit a thousand miles an hour. Designing a contraption that goes in one direction. And the, like the person, can, the person piloting it, like moving it, can see in one direction, and the person up top who's firing the cannon can spin around like an actual tank. <laughs> but to Da Vinci's credit, it took an entire world war for people to figure out how tanks work. <laughs> So, this is also true, and we've we'll gone through we'll many a design. We'll cut yeah. DaVinci a little bit of slack. <laughs> yeah, I mean the thing, and they give him, and they give him some more shit. <laughs> this was meant to be what Alex says piloted. I think it was what meant to be pushed by what two soldiers. They were meant to lift up like yes. an entire wooden uh, and then and then rotate base <laughs> with eighteen cannons. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, was, yeah. Like, good luck with that, bud. <laughs> it was either, it was either two soldiers or two horses. Either way, not gonna happen. Oh yeah, in the uh, totally accurate battle simulator, it spins. Well, that's that's what its original design was. The original <laughs> design was that it's supposed to be able to spin to shoot 
ca uh, cannons, mul like multiple cannons at once. Exactly. It's so funny. I've been trying to figure out. It rotates to figure, like a top. Uh, yeah. One thing I've been trying to do with like the whole mechanist thing is see if I can like reinvent things somehow or think of like ways to take them on designs and then make them worse or make them quirkier. Like one idea I had was basically, you know, if I was to make the tank, what I what I do, I looked at a bunch of weird train designs and came up with stuff like that. Let's see if I can go ahead because I did like a, a sort of collage of ideas. Oh, cool! Thank you, Desaren. Desaren says, "I hope you're having a good evening, and I may have sent someone your way who's interested in art." Awesome. You might have seen this already. Commissions are but open. Oh, don't worry. Hey, Da Vinci's tank's in there. So, this is a bunch of weird tank designs from over the ages. That's a Potenko. <gasps> the Potenko? Yeah. Yes! The tank duck. The potato tank duck. Which one's the Potenko? That's uh, not its actual name, that's just what we call yeah, it. That's just what we, it's. It's from uh, Battlefield 1. Yeah, uh, it's okay. a uh, it's an approximation of a German of a German built tank. Actually, interestingly, the Germans didn't really use tanks very much in uh, in World War One. It was mainly the British with the land ship, mm. which is not included in here, surprisingly. Even though it's kind of like the quintessential. The the Mark One kind of looks like a prototype. Uh, you mean sorry, Roman? You mean the the um the parasite please continue i'm sorry i just had to respond to i need to look up something for a second oh yeah, the mark, the mark four land ship was uh, the, the functional one so this seems like it's a prototype for that one. Oh, excellent i hope that uh I do know of that. Yes, it it uh is a parasite that attaches itself to snails. The Orion wagon actually legitimately looks like a Star Wars vehicle to me. Let me have a look. Oh yeah, that does. That really does. <laughs> like if it, like if it was like approximately five times bigger, I could see it as like a shuttle for Star Wars or something. Yeah. The killing strike just looks like a roller skate. Yeah. It, oh my god, yeah, it does. <laughs> I love that the little willy is literally just a steel box. Like, they, they just put a steel box on tracks. They're like, ah, oh, yes, this will defend. I mean, I guess they were like, well, we can make do with it being uncomfortable as long as we live long enough to blow them up before they blow us up. Well, it, show, it, shows, you, it shows you the... Um, the main issue with the thinking at the time, the thinking at the time was tank will need to make tanks have like thick armor so people can't be hurt. Whereas modern day tank design, because we understand how this stuff works, the the armor is actually canted so that it deflects yeah. uh, mm -hmm. shells. And then we have stuff like the uh, the reactive armor that you showed me, where it it unleashes little explosives. That, ah, here that it is. detonate uh, larger ones before they can actually do damage. Yes. So this Genius design. So this is what a cool one that I found. Guess how or how I figured out to get the reference for this one. Ooh, high five to Zarin. She got another game in the mail today. She said she is reaching nice. critical mass of collector boxes of games again. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me. Uh, what I did was I took a look through characters in Thomas the Tank Engine. Oh, boy. Like the one that they built into a wall and left him to die? I remember that. Um, Not quite, but yeah. yeah. That was the thing <laughs> I discovered. Such a dark episode. Here we go. So this is an interesting one. But yeah, I literally looked through those characters because it's based on real-life trains. And here we go. Uh... This is one train from Columbia. You know what? Screw it. I'm just going to show you the Thomas the Tank Engine one because that's the best reference I can find for it. <laughs> okay. So just imagine this without a face. Uh, 
but legitimately that would be a half decent tank design because it does kind of have the canted armor What about the basilisk? I have indeed heard of the basilisk. Uh, when we were reading up about the tetzel worm, uh, we learned that uh, in Italy it is known as the, it is called a basilisk. Uh, but from what I understand of mythology, they are two different creatures. A, uh, a basilisk is supposed to be able to paralyze or turn you to stone either with its breath or with its eyes, whereas the tetzel worm is supposed to be extremely poisonous. So I'm not sure if they are directly related or not. <laughs> Roman says he knows that one from uh, Castlevania. Working on this design has been interesting because, like, the descriptions of them. Like, I actually, honestly, out of all the references that I have of these, I kind of like this one the most, where it's like a sleek, fluffy snake. Although, I do like the hot dog with little feet. This, this is the best drawing. <laughs> it's a little hot dog with legs! Oh! <laughs> Ah, oh, bring back the cat. There we go. <laughs> I love that fat little bastard. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway. Oh. Da -da -da. Yeah. I think I've only ever what played one Castlevania day. And the Kelpie? Yes. Uh, the Kelpie was on my list of cryptids actually before. Mm. And I do know of the Kelpie. Kelpie just sounds like a good, like a drink. <laughs> it's made with seaweed. E. Uh, the Kelpie was an interesting one because we sat around and talked about, like, what do you think it could have actually been? And I concluded that it was people, it was drunk people uh, wandering into the moors and drowning. The moors? Oops, walked off into the swamp and uh, and drowned. It must have been a Kelpie. Oh dear. The Kelpie got them. Kelpie's a fake must cryptid be. because it's just a horse. I We did have to make it exciting because the description is, it's a horse. And you don't know it is super... It's but that's part of its thing is you don't know that it's, it's a supernatural creature trying to kill you until you can't move your hand away from its adhesive skin. It's a... It's a fucking mimic. But that doesn't make it entertaining to draw. No, it's a very entertaining to draw, as you know. No, it doesn't because it's just a horse. <laughs> you have to make it exciting, but then when you do, it's like, oh, well, I mean, nobody would mistaken that for an actual horse now. It's like, yeah, nobody would. Well, crap baskets. Well, crap baskets. Alright. Continue putting the scaly pattern on this. I do want to leave part of the of the, the worm nice and, and glossy, f floofy fur. Well, in this case, it'll be gray because that's the color of my cat. She's a rare little French breed. It almost got wiped out during World War II. Big sad. But the breed was saved, and now I have a really smart, really whiny baby who tries to turn my lights on. And woke me up at 3 a.m. this morning because she wanted more food, and then flung it, flung um, my water and my mouse off of my desk. Thankfully, the water was in a water bottle and did not spill. I grabbed her by her stupid little butt and tossed her back into bed. Now you see if a man did And then she that, remembered then she did have real food. controversy. Oh my god. What about the Sams? I do not know what a Sam Sams is. 
y'all be the Sam's. <laughs> she is a are they, spoiled are Sam's brat. like Karen's? Are Sam's like Karen's? <laughs> I think Roman's been trying to find a cryptid I didn't know anything about. <laughs> because now he's cheering. <laughs> Let's look that up. The Sams. Or maybe I won't type anything. Come on. Sams underscore Undertale. See, all I get is some um, Syrian American Medical Society and uh, Sam's Club. <laughs> I don't get any cryptids. along the tail of the kitty. The kitty. The kitty worm. Kitty, kitty, kitty. It's a children's book series about the Sams that only comes on Samstang Saturday. It's just the German genie. Oh, I see. I have not heard of that before, but then again, I, I unfortunately do not think that that is a uh, book series that was sold in the United States. So it's not anything that I've ever read. The Sams is a really weird creature. <laughs> That's probably something I should add to my cryptid list for next year. Time to... Next cryptid, cryptid currency. Oh, don't even remind me how that my hashtag Cryptober has been taken over by cryptid bros. Well, one question I have is, if you were to make cryptocurrency into a monster, what would you do with it? It'd be a fucking post-it note. A post-it note? <laughs> a completely useless monster that does nothing. Be a foam See, packing I peanut. Least... I'd make it so it was kind of. Like... Oh, here's what you do: you make it like a mimic, but it only imitates things like gold. I was gonna say it imitates things you don't actually want. What was that about a hashtag? Oh, uh, for for my uh, for my challenge, I used hashtag Cryptober and hashtag Cryptober twenty twenty two for these pictures and part way through a bunch of fucking crypto people were starting just started posting with that tag a cryptid uh, uh, crypto cryptid would be a creature that steals your money says ferb yeah that's true i, I suppose if i had to take it seriously and actually dignify it with uh with a, a, a real design it probably would be something like that I just don't want to give them any attention. <laughs> you giving me attention, but you want to give me money? Pay me for the hashtag, cowards. <laughs> Every time you wish something on something, the Sam's black points on his face disappear. The bigger the wish, the more the points go. Ah, oh, he has a limit. When you Tales of the Crypt thing or something. Oh no. Sam. Things won't be going at all to plan. Don't get me sued by Disney, please. 
Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I don't think that they would actually flag for that, but you never know. They're Disney. They can you be can't completely expect... evil when they want to. We're the family-friendly company that'll fuck you up royally. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Everything you love and know is forfeit. <laughs> oh, everything you love and know is forfeit. Oh. But this is the happiest place on earth, Timmy. <laughs> if you're not happy, you go in the forever box. <laughs> I do a really terrible Mickey impression. Good God. Crypto is devastating in that the vast majority end up in debt with just a few actually making money. It's scam central. Because of that, I consider crypto a very serious thing. Oh, it for sure is. That's why I am absolutely delighted every time I see it fail. Uh, Roman says, concerning the Sam, uh, only the human family who they who he lives with can, can grant wishes because everybody else who makes a wish on him, it goes very wrong. Ah. I've actually seen and read the creepy creepy pasta abandoned by Disney. I think that was actually the uh, inspiration for Bendy and the Ink Machine, if I remember correctly. Which was a fun game, but it had a disappointing ending. And there's also that one where it's like um, Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Oh, it's okay, Roman. I understood what, what you meant. Uh, Roman wanted to correct uh, his previous typing. Only the human family that the Sam lives with can can uh, make wishes. If anybody else tries to make a wish, it will go very wrong. Desert says this would make a really good pet for a Limeo or a Gorgon. That's true. Oh, that's a good idea. Cat is also a snack. Okay. We got a good question for you, Alex. Mm hmm? You have a choice between piloting a Gundam, mm -hmm. the Megazord from Power Rangers, mm hmm. Or Gypsy Danger from Pacific Rim. Which one would you go for? Probably end up being a Gundam because that's the only one out of the ones you listed that can be piloted by one person. Oh, yeah. The Megazord requires a minimum of five people. Uh, and Gypsy Danger requires to, to be connected at a brain level. And I don't really trust anybody to that extent. <laughs> To hook my nervous I like how your thought process was. Let's okay. So I'm given the choice of three giant robots. Which one would I have to? Put, which one do I not need? Well, that was the for? first thing that occurred to me was that I would need other people to pilot the rest of them. Which one can I pilot on my own? <laughs> yeah, Desaren says the Gundam would probably be the most powerful out of those, and that's true. The Megazord would probably come in second as the most powerful uh, robot in there. Gypsy Danger is pretty good too, but it's very slow. Hmm. I think it's the largest out of them. It might be the largest out of all of them. The Gundam's probably the smallest. Some Megal Oh, some Megazords have a single mode. That's true. The Green Ranger Zord had had its own mode. And then it turned into like funky body armor. Or vice versa. It's been a while since I've seen Power Rangers. Gundams do, for the most part, look very cool. 
Except for some of the designs in G Gundam, which either ended up being kind of racist or kind of stupid. I'm looking at you, Windmill Gundam. <laughs> I've never heard anyone mention it. I shouted you about an hour ago. Did I reply? You did? I don't... So yeah, I don't know which one that which one he meant, the Zarin. It might have just been like the OG one, because that one was five people. It's okay. I'm a Power Rangers nerd too. It's just been such a long time since I've watched any of their stuff that I've forgotten a lot of it. But I watched it so often as a kid. You are not alone. Although what's funny is I didn't know what they were for quite some time in, uh, in like, second grade. Uh, so, when people were talking about them, the only ranger I knew of was a forest ranger. So I thought it was, like, some weird, so it was like some weird thing where they were, like, mounties with superpowers. And I was like, that... I mean, I guess that's great, but why is everyone obsessed with this? Doesn't that sound kind of stupid? <laughs> and then I actually saw their figures, and I went, Oh, there's something different. Okay. And then I finally watched on TV, and I went, Oh, this is cool. My Timothy Falls Rangers. Yeah, when we're not... Wa well, the next time we pick a different show to binge, Mikey, we should binge a Power Ranger show. Because there are some nowadays that are on the air that are really fucking out there. I dare you to make it Mystic Force. I don't know if Mystic Force is on Netflix, but I can look. It, it's on YouTube. Oh, for free, that's right. The not Harry Potter one. That one is a disaster. You watch it. I one of it. the ninja ones is, uh, it's not Ninja Storm. Ninja Storm is funny as shit. It doesn't need to be as, like, wild and crazy as it is. But it is. Oh, Roman says he has a new beta design for Fua. Yeah, by all means, feel free to uh, toss it our way. I will have a look at it. If you want. Oh, Ninja Steel is the more recent one? Okay, so maybe it's Ninja Storm, the one where they said, oh... We're going to try and follow the original uh, script more. Super Sentai. And it ended up being really, really bad. Oh, I see for her, for Fuwa's actual face, the the rough idea you've got was uh, was to like twist her features around and give her some extras. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's a pretty neat idea. All right, time to make a cute one. Time to make a cute one. Te technically hard to do because I technically don't have a soul. <laughs> don't worry, neither do I. I had to take someone else's. See, now that's just rude. I didn't mind. Doesn't make it any less rude. <laughs> I still want to go somewhere with that idea, says says Roman. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, keep uh, keep sketching out uh, ideas. To toss up for the worst song is between Mystic Force and Operation Overdrive. I do not. Uh, no, Homunculus is not on my list. Uh, I had some, um, I had some guidelines I set up for myself for cryptids, uh, and a Homunculus, uh, doesn't, uh, fit into those perimeters, because it's not a creature, it's a constructed thing, and it's not something that people think they see in the wild. Oh, when TV show when TV shows do bad rap intros, those are so awful. Like the one that they did for Naruto, and the one they did for One Piece. Oh boy, I'm having oh I'm having like flashbacks now. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Just there, it's chanting no now. Yeah, for uh for the uh. 
for the cryptid list. And there's a couple that scoot the line, unfortunately, because I couldn't find anything else. Uh, the qualification for a cryptid is uh, it's got to be some kind of living thing. It can't be constructed. It can't be a person. Like, it can't be like a ghost or a vampire. Oh, see ya. Back to work, <laughs> says Desarin. You have fun too. As much fun as you can while at work. Uh, the one on the list that ended up kind of scooting past the being a person thing was the Loop Garu, but that's because I didn't realize it was a werewolf at the time. I thought that it was a uh, like a humanoid wolf creature. I didn't realize it was a person who turned into one. So that's the one that scooted it. Um, and it can't just be like a, a mythical creature with magical powers. It couldn't be magic. Uh, and it had to be something that people still believe that they see. Oh, Fer <laughs> Ferbs made it to the Loop Garu video. <laughs> Yay! Yeah, there'll be more than I'm posting. They got backlogged because of how long it takes for them to render. It ends up being longer than I thought, so. But they'll all go up eventually. They're just a bit backlogged for now. Uh, cat head. <laughs> Some behind videos have like 50 in my watch queue. Yeah, I actually realized that there's an unreleased stray video. Uh, in the queue also. Oh I'll my god. Up. I oh. just realized something. What? When I... Alex? When yeah. I play... When I play through Jedi Knight Outcast... Yeah? You're gonna hear a very familiar voice. I was sitting... I, I was testing it to make sure that all my settings were, were correct for when I do play it. And, um... I just realized that uh, I, I was sitting here thinking, I know this voice from somewhere. Where, where the fuck have I heard it? It's like, I've heard it very recently. Uh, Vanessa Marshall actually voices the, uh, voices uh, Jan in this oh. game. Which is funny because she voices Hera in Rebels. Oh my <laughs> god, Hera. Holy shit. It's, it's so weird to hear her voice as somebody else, because I just associate her with Hera now. Well, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's just like every time I hear Chris Sabat in something, I'm like, Vegeta? Like, last night when, when yeah. you were showing me the beta stuff from Dark Tide and one of the voices for the Psyker? Is it the Psyker? No, it's the religious one. Yeah, it's the, uh, the Inquisitor. The, 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 the Zealot. The Zealot. Yeah. yeah. And one of the voices for the Zealot is is like a deeper slightly more european vegeta and i was like vegeta it's him oh my god it's my boy okay i'm looking at the cast list he's now, religious i'm looking at the cast list you're never gonna believe who's also in jedi knight jedi outcast whom steve bloom i was gonna say is it steve bloom <laughs> it's an all, an all star wars stuff <laughs> oh and uh one actually fun one uh, Carolyn Seymour, otherwise known as Dr. Chalk, was. Yay! Yes. Yes. She's in a lot of Star Wars games uh, of, of that time frame. I don't think she really does a lot of Star Wars stuff anymore. But Well, it looks like uh, she, she hasn't done a lot of anything recently. Her like last yeah. one is Gears 5 in 2019. So my question for you yeah. guys is, do I draw the the Shibi Tetzel Worm as, a, as Snake Loaf all curled up in a little ball? Or... Do I have it pouncing? Isaiah Loaf. Wait, Steve Bloom plays Gallic Fire? I don't remember that. I'll have to listen for that when I play it. They got Billy D. Williams to reprise his role as Lando. Amazing. That's, crazy. That's where all the money went. <laughs> um. Night. Man, it's so weird to see all the actors who, who were in this game be, like, old now. <laughs> oh, no, it may have to be this. <laughs> it oh, may yeah. have to be stretching. It's like, see, it's like when you see Jennifer Hale and you see how gray she's gone. Yeah, and, and I'm like, oh, my God, when I, when I like, played everything that the, these people were in, they were all, like, like on the young side of, of adult. But now they're all they're all old people. Did you see that photo? I think I it has to be the stretching John, one. Did you see that More photo I posted to John, uh, John DiMaggio in his twenties? Yeah. Let's find a yawning cat. 
that I it's, can use. Uh, it's sobering. I'll just say that. <sighs> like, I barely recognized him. Even his voice wasn't even the same. I'm surprised that Bob Bergen doesn't do more Luke. I think like this would... he he sounds more like Luke than uh, Matt Mercer did. To be honest, I'm I agree with you, but I think Matt Mercer did the better portrayal acting wise. Maybe. I mean, the problem mm -hmm. is, is that like there's a there's a huge disparity in the way that he's written in games versus the way he's actually he actually is in the original trilogy. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's, like, like a lot of like a lot of the expanded universe, universe treats Luke like he's this fucking badass who could just do he all this is crazy shit. Such a whiny baby. He's like a stoic like he's like this stoic badass Jedi who's mastered the Force when in reality like what are what are we actually basing this off of? Yeah. Like, well, like, I mean, he's he's a little more mature in Return of the Jedi. Like, he's he's in a different place because it's a two year time jump. But like, I don't know, man. I thought. Uh, well, that's why when people were like, "Why would Luke just throw? Why would he be hiding on this planet in in um, Last Jedi?" Why would he throw that away? And I'm like, have we? Yeah, are we talking about the same Luke Skywalker? Because he is just as much of a whiny drama queen as Anakin was. It runs True. in the Skywalker bloodline. True. Anakin has which is, it, which is why Ray fits right in. <laughs> yes, Luke has it. Uh, uh, Anakin's got it. My Luke's got it. it. Ben Solo My has it, and now so does Ray. Being a drama queen. Uh, Roman says, so I want to mention Fua's personality uh, uh, quickly. Uh, she's arrogant, happy-go-lucky, believes she is the best, a bit crazy, somewhat perverted, and fully emotional without her mask on. She's me. <laughs> yeah, I was, was going to mention... Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, I was going to say, like, Star Wars Battlefront 2, I think they did a decent job of, like, how they wrote, you know, Luke. Like, you know, just basically someone who was a bit war-wise, I think, is the term I would put for it. I'm not sure if it's a term that is... War-weary? Really I would say war-wise. Okay. I don't know if that's really a term, but basically someone who's come out of the other side of war and realized, oh, we never need this to happen again. Oh, I thought that was war-weary. Yeah. Well, but if, yeah. that's, if that's the proper term, then yeah, that's the proper term. I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe I'm thinking of something different. But that's what exactly. comes to mind. Yeah, but yeah. I, 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 I do, I do like the way they they wrote him in in uh, Battlefront. But I don't know. There, it, there's this really weird like inconsistency with the wisdom that he shows in in the movies versus the the wisdom that he shows in the games like he's he's i i divide movie luke from from differently from video game luke do we divide right. him also from tv show luke all right so here's a good question because he's got that cool emotionlessness going on in the mandalorian i don't think i actually don't but i don't think he's he's cool and emotionless in the mandalorian i actually think he that's the closest portrayal we've seen from mm -hmm. like to him as he was in the original trilogy. Yeah, well, I, I took it to, to be like he was mimicking how he thought that a uh, yes. a master Yes, but be. you can still see the, the little glimpses yeah. of, of Luke. Yeah. And he's, he, and, but, but I mean, his, even the scene where he's discussing, because he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing with, with Ahsoka, like he, it, I like that writing because, yeah, he didn't learn how to be a Jedi, actually. Like, nope. he learned some of the stuff, but he, it's not like he was he's like a full-fledged Jedi. He got, like, a couple of years of training from Yoda, and that's it. Like, like, like Yoda, 900 years old. <laughs> that guy had a long time to be a Jedi. Luke, not even 30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Uh, Roman says, also, Fuwa's ridiculous traits or slash flaws, she gets easily addicted to strange things like loose socks, churros, and maybe sombreros, but hates things like drugs and casinos. Being addicted to churros is not weird at all. <laughs> that's not a flaw, it's a feature. <laughs> that, yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not weird at all. It's a, uh, <laughs> Currently, I'm ridiculous. addicted to cereal. Being addicted to churros is honestly kind of typical and mandated. I is I realize something just now. Mm. Luke could technically be prefrontal lobe. What? Have we not heard about that idea? No. That, like pe people do not fully develop their frontal lobe until they are over the age of twenty-five. Roman wants yes, to know if being is, addicted is to sombreros is 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 a That's good thing. That's also fine. Sombreros are cool. I like sombreros. Sombreros are funky. So, yeah. Luke could still technically be sort of in the teenage mindset if he is not over the age of twenty five yet. <laughs> true. Very true. He's this what nineteen in the in A New Hope. Yep. And four years pass, so he's twenty three at the end of Return of the Jedi. Oh, he's still a baby adult. He, he, he baby. He's a baby so adult. So how old would he be at the start of the Mandalorian? Uh, let me think for a second. 28. So does this five, mean five that, she, that she likes having socks loose? And she thinks it's like a cool fashion trend? Or does she get bothered if she sees them go by? Being addicted to loose socks is pretty weird. <laughs> <laughs> can see being addicted to socks, but loose socks is the strange part. <laughs> I love you, Mike. You're such a goof. Yeah. So yeah, Luke. Luke would be Luke would be in his late twenties by by the time Mandalorian takes off. Because Mandalorian, I think, starts in nine ABY, and Return of the Jedi ends at four ABY. So there's five years in between. Okay. I calculate so he's, years he's and fully ages by, by when characters were born. He's he's full frontal lobe, and then it just yeah, he's, he's full he's full frontal, yeah. <laughs> and, at some, at some, <laughs> and at some point he uh, has a frontal lobe lobotomy uh, by the time he gets the sequel trilogy. <laughs> well, well, I I think it's consistent with his character. Yeah, it honest. is consistent like, with his character. Like. Like, uh, like people are like, why didn't he do what Yoda said? Well, I mean, to be honest, he didn't do what Yoda said in, in uh, the, the original trilogy. Yeah, either, either of just... the times he told him to do something, he did not do it. And and if we're going to if we're going to act like he's a lot like his father, then then what he did in the sequel trilogy is a lot like his father. It's a <laughs> hundred totally percent in do. line with his dad. Yes. Yeah. I suppose my main beef with it is that I don't see a lot of motivation or character development that could have led him to him going so far oh. as trying to kill his own Okay, dad. Roman, you have a good you have a good rest well, of your day. His computer yeah. is overheated and it's going to die. He didn't try to kill his own nephew. He, he did. I no, he didn't. He did what not. What happened what happened was he knew that his that uh, that Ben was struggling with the dark side. He went to go and check on him. And felt the presence of the Emperor and instinctively turned his lightsaber on. This yep. is what happened. And that is he, the exact moment he when He literally ben talks up. about how the moment he turns his lightsaber on, he's like, oh shit, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah, but he, that's right when Ben wakes up and Ben yep. is like, holy shit, you're trying to kill me. <laughs> yep. After waking up from a dream in which Snoke, also the Emperor, told him your uncle hates you mm -hmm. and he's jealous of your power and he's going to try and kill you. And that's the first thing he sees when he wakes up. Yeah. Okay, if that's what they were going for in the movie, they did not translate that well enough. Oh, there's honestly, a lot of things honestly, that are poorly translated think, in there. I but... actually think that's one of the few things it's, that was yeah. over-explained. Yeah. Because they, they, sh they show us three different perspectives. What yeah. Luke thinks happened, what Ben, ben thinks, thinks happened, and what actually happened. And then what actually happened. happened. And then, after each time we see what happened... We get an explanation from each of the characters as though we didn't just see what happened. I yeah. feel like people like people misremember it because the movie is so crammed full of other stuff that really didn't need to be in it. Yeah. So so people don't remember the good part the good parts of it. But that is actually one of the more well explained parts of the movie. 
Mm -hmm. uh, um, I'll tell you that my big problem with Last Jedi. Are you Go ready? Because this this is a problem that can be solved with literally one line. Yup. Uh, the whole sequence where um, they're running, like the the um, resistance ships are running away from that star destroyer, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for whatever reason, the lady in charge, the, the purple haired lady, I forget her name, and it doesn't really matter because she's a one off character who dies in the movie. Yep. Uh, Spoilers. The per but yeah, the purple hair lady um, is like, doesn't tell anybody what the fuck is going on, which is not a good leadership trait. Yeah, bad plan. Um, and, you know, she comes to be 100%. I know what they were going for. They were They were trying to have her be like the wise leader who's. Who, you know, knows what to do, but you know, Poe is, is like a firebrand. He does, he's very inexperienced. He's, yeah, and his problem he's is he's not listening to them and he's not having faith in yeah. the plan. Yeah, he needs in order for him for people to trust him as a leader, he needs to be able to trust other people as leaders. Yeah. However, here's the problem. Honestly, his criticism of her is 100 percent legit because yeah. she doesn't let anyone else in on the plan either. Everyone is just kind of fucking following her without question. There's no actually no reason why she shouldn't be able to tell anybody what the fuck is going on. Yeah. If it she could told have been everybody else a... but didn't tell Poe, then that would have been fine. But here's yeah. what you can do to fix it. You know, they they let us know very very early on in the movie that it's really weird that the Empire or the First Order or whatever can track where they're going through hyperspace. And that maybe they don't know at the time how it's done. Later in the movie, we discover that it's because of some kind of like special technology technology that they have on their ship that allows them to track it. Mm -hmm. But for the whole movie. The resistance doesn't know that this is the case. They only know this at the end of the movie. So, why not have this whole thing where they think there's a spy on board? Yeah, and if you really want to make it be like uh, Poe having a reason to to like have it be a big thing for him, have it be that he's not being told because his actions that got a whole bunch of people killed mm -hmm. have caused her to believe maybe he's the spy. And therefore, because she won't tell him anything, he thinks she's the spy. Exactly. Whole... Whole, whole thing solved whole with a line. Third, a whole third of the movie is fixed with a single line. Right? <laughs> the other one, the Canto Bite plot, Please throw that I, away. <laughs> I think it can be retooled, but it requires more significant changes. Yes. It it needs I, to be one of the first things that happens. I also think that as much as I like Rose Tico, she's introduced too late into the series, and she, not enough is done with her I know. for me to care. And that so, really sucks. <laughs> so as much as I like the character and I like the performance, I feel like it's wasted because, like... Uh, because, you know, because who is she? Yeah. What the fuck is this? <laughs> She's established just as, like, being a hopeful person and that her sister's one of the people who died. But it never comes up that she's, like, mad at Poe for her dying. She doesn't seem to have a horse in this race is the problem. Well, no, she, she's... She's supposed to be... Like, from, from, a, from a, a mechanical point of view, she's supposed to be the glimpse into why people fight. She's supposed to be the ordinary person, not one of the heroes, but one of the ordinary people mm -hmm. in the resistance. And it's, it, he's supposed to like what mechanically what's supposed to happen is that Finn is, does not believe in the resistance. Isn't, it doesn't seem to have a lot of lot that he believes in period, other than getting the fuck away and surviving. And mm -hmm. she's supposed to function mechanically as giving him a lot of different reasons why fighting for the resistance is a good idea. And it's she, the tertiary part of her character is to also provide a uh, kind of a, a more streetwise understanding of how the galaxy works because Finn was raised as a, like a child soldier has no fucking clue what the hell is going on. Awful right? lot of women getting hurt and dying in servicing in service of male character development in this fucking movie. Well, Here's the thing. Honestly, I think you're interpret interpreting it wrong. What I think what's happening is that female characters 
are the ones who know what's going on. Yeah, they're the only competent the people in here. That's the key. fucking morons who need to be taught a lesson. Yeah. <laughs> like, Every g- a girl is sent to clean up the fucking mess that the guy made. Mm-hmm. Realistic. Here's one, thing, no, I... here's one thing they absolutely should have done. They should have killed Finn. They should have killed Finn. And I say that simply because they teased it three fucking times. And by the third fucking time, I was hoping it would happen. <laughs> Like, well, especially since they kind of side sideline him in the next movie. Like, they yeah. barely do anything with him, which annoyed the hell out of me because there's his Finn as a character is a has great character. So much freaking potential. Yeah. So much potential. He's a former child soldier slash stormtrooper who doesn't know how the universe works and is traumatized. So even though he wants to do the right thing, his first instinct is to fucking run. There, th- it's particularly strange to me that they don't use him as the fish out of water character. Yeah. Because he's he's perfect for it. But instead they kind of try to have it have these where Ray is kind of a fish out of water character, but to be 100% honest, mm-hmm. Ray would not be a fish out of water character. No. Her- she she's she oh, survived really. on her own on Jakku. Yeah. She wouldn't be a fish out of water. She would be a jaded character who doesn't trust that something good has finally happened to her. Like, like it makes sense that she would be like amazed when she sees another world because she's never seen another world before. Yeah, but but in terms of like, like her not knowing how other things work, unrealistic. Mm-hmm. Like she, like she totally strikes me as the kind of character that would know how the galaxy works. Like, why didn't she know how a gun worked? Right? I could understand her never having gotten her hands on one because that would be dangerous. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't understand why she wouldn't know how a fucking gun works. Yeah. I could understand her not having had one because, you know, I I feel like Plunk, Plunkett probably would have been like, Nah, I'm none of my none of my basically slaves can have His guns. His name is Plunkett, and he plunks food on the on the. He does. Thing. I just want to point plunk. that out. His name is Plunkett, and he plunks things on the on the counter. That is so <laughs> funny to me. <laughs> Thank Star you Wars for is full of stuff like that. By the way. Mm-hmm. One, Thank you, for Ferb says, "What a cute little sneak bean." Really, both of her eyes should be closed because she's yawning. But I wanted to show the big, beautiful eye, so. She's looking over at you as it, she it starts just, to be. It just makes her look mischief, mischievous when with the one eye open. She's side-eyeing. Big mm-hmm. side-eye. It's like she's pretending to lure you in. <laughs> like she's plotting something. <laughs> like, I may look cute, and I am cute. The Tobin. Tobins. Many Tobin. Tobin is important for Cat. My cuteness laws in my prey. <laughs> and then I bite them and paralyze them because I am a titular. Do you, do you associate accents or voices with animals? And if so, Ooh. what do you associate with cats? Because I'll tell you after you, you tell me what you associate with cats. I associate them oh. with Thunder's accent, but that's just a coincidence. <laughs> I suppose I would associate them with being snooty, so kind of British high-pitched, sort of like, oh, yes, and what do you want to do? Ah. Uh, see, I don't, I can't explain to you why, but I associate French accents with cats. <laughs> that track. Yes, little claws. Very weedle little, little toe knives. Feet needles. Uh, so t- uh, bonjour. So you're telling me, uh, soon. Oh, God, what the hell is the male version of Mademoiselle in French? Monsieur. Monsieur. So you're trying. So you're trying to tell me, Monsieur, that you are not have my little box repaired. How dare you? Also, I heard I heard somebody say that neutering their cat is a bad thing. What the fuck? It is, is not. I, like, whatever. Unless you're doing it without anesthesia, it isn't. No, Alex. What they do is see they, they tie a rubber band around. Uh, oh my god! The area and just let it fall off. I love your sister's reaction to when I'm like, I'm certain they don't do this, but just so that that my brother can shut the hell up, please explain. And her response was to scream, "Oh God, no! Why would you do that?" And I'm oh, like, "Yes." It would cause sepsis, and then the cat yes, would and die. then the cat would die because cats are are 
a, a bunch of muscle and organs inside of a fur bag. You can't do that to them. Their also, skin is super delicate. Also, you can't just like cut blood flow off to something and then have that not start. This will be fine. Yeah. It will. It would literally decay. Like start to decay on the body, which is bad. Yes. Uh, Thank you for that wonderful mental image, Michael. But um, it actually, in a lot of cases, ends up being good for the cat to do it because then they are not assaulted by hormone spikes every month, which ends up being unhealthy for them. It causes a lot of stress, especially since they will spend their time uh, in heat uh, miserable this, because they're not going to get to... Oh, my video I'll froze. Be, oh, no, there it goes. I'll be back, by the way. I'm going to go get food. Okay. Is this for male cats and female cats? Yes. Experiences? Yes. They both go into... Uh, female cats go into heat and male cats go into rut. Hmm. Where they, they smell... They can smell a female and they go around. They, they scent mark the house with really stinky spray. I wonder if that's the case with humans because that would explain a lot of male behavior. Oh, may, uh, yeah. Humans go through cycles as well. Uh, women have... Uh, or well... People with uh, with ovaries uh, go through a period, and then they have a, an opposing time where uh, where their reproductive drive is at its highest point. So if they're interested in reproducing, they probably will then. And human men also go through uh, also have cycles, hormone cycles like that. Nice. The time when they end, they're like, yeah, I'm going to show my yeah. However, because we as a species are capable of reproducing at any time, once we hit uh, the the age in which we can, you know, reproduce, uh, we don't have stressful cycles like that. Huh. Uh, now, for there's there's certain cases like for uh, <laughs> yeah, for it's very glad that my period suppressed. It's always so miserable. Yeah. I can imagine. It hits some people worse than, than others, depending. That's why I have medicine for mine as well. I'd be out sick for a long time if I didn't. But uh, but it's less stressful. Like, it's still stressful, but it's less stressful for us than it is for, say, something like a ferret. As a matter of fact, if you have a ferret and you aren't going to be breeding them, you'd better get that f the female ferret spay... Uh, spade because if you don't she will die she has to mate and if she doesn't then the the hormones start building up more and more in her body and she will she'll die of stress yes. so if you're not going to breed your ferrets go get them fixed if not you are sentencing sentencing them to a miserable death So there's nothing wrong with spaying or neutering your animal unless you're planning to breed them. And if you are going to breed them, I really hope that you know what you're doing. And aren't like a puppy mill, because that's horrible. I did not hear what you said. Animals should be pets. Yes. At least the kind that aren't meant to be pets. Now, oh, the music one. stopped and I never turned it, it never grabbed another one. <laughs> Whoops. Oh. That must have been a short time ago. Here we go. Let's get that. Sorry about that. We were talking for, for so long. I didn't notice it either. <laughs> there was music. It just stopped. As long as there is music.
It suddenly hit with an overwhelming silence and it was like, I am uncomfortable. That's verb. Ah, I see. No, thank you for letting me know because I actually didn't notice. I suddenly heard thousands of voices cry out in terror and suddenly silence. <laughs> Thankfully not that. But I can understand being like, well, now all I hear is the sound of nothing echoing over and over again in your microphone, and I don't like that. I'm not a fan of that either. Mm -hmm. He's the... Once October's done, and, you know, uh, aside from when I go on my my trip in uh, later in November, uh, I'm going to try and uh, get a better video schedule. Because I was working so much on other things that I didn't take time to record uh, videos and things. So I need to make sure I get that. You still need to... Yeah. Hmm? Yeah, you got uh, Stray and things to consider? Yeah, I've got to finish Stray. Like stray I've and so on. got to finish... Um, Tiny Bunny, because that's almost done. I just haven't finished it yet. Uh, yeah, I think I'll start streaming Hades, because that's a much longer uh, game. So it's probably better for a stream format. Same thing with Persona. So, uh, I also need to record more Dragon Age with Mike. So I'm going to try and set aside time each week to do that. And I'd like to stream more often as well. Hmm. So, probably pick a day during the week and be like, all right, Mike, let's record. Uh, it'll probably end up being a Saturday. Or Sunday, depending on if we have a D&D &D game or not. Yeah, Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Would you get copyright stricken for streaming things like the Power Ranger stuff? Sometimes people do. It depends. So, like, even though it's fully available on YouTube? Yeah, it, it really depends. Uh, some people watch uh, stuff with fans. Uh, other people don't. I think if it's free on uh, on YouTube, then it would probably be okay to stream, but you couldn't just sit there in silence. It would be... Mm. It would probably need to have a running commentary. Yeah, so that's something you could provide. Yeah, I'm sure that's something I could do. I like some people, I've seen artists like have, you know, Star Trek playing in the background while they're doing their stuff. Mm. I mean, that's something I would have to look into to just see. That was not on Twitch, though. That was on someone else. Yeah. Because Twitch is very adamant about not doing stuff that would set off their uh, their copyright algorithm. Like music. That's why I'm glad that the stuff I found from Blurred doesn't get flagged. But if I turned on, like, say, Pandora... It definitely would yell at me. It's like Zeus. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, this doesn't look right. So, Alex, quick mm -hmm. question for you. Yeah. What is the most... So how often do you get, like, major reactions from old people when they see you typing? Like, what do you mean? 
Well, I had it the other day where I was like just typing in a password on the phone. I was just like, G -g -g you, you did that without looking. Oh, like that. Um, there aren't any elderly people uh, around in my life, so never. Uh, by, by that, I mean like people in their 40s, their, your 40s or 50s, sorry, in their 40s or 50s. Well, I mean, I'm up here by myself. Uh, well, you never so. had that kind of thing show up in like when you're working in the office? Nope. People were wowed by my ability to make the copy machine work, but they didn't pay me for it. So I've actually never had that happen. The most uh, the most tech reaction I've gotten from people concerning specifically computers is that they assume that I can do everything with a computer, which I can't. Uh, yeah. Or they get miffed and say, you've explained it too fast, I'm not going to remember any of that. When you've done like three steps in the process. Well, no. Like I was explaining uh, right-clicking to my grandmother or hitting alt or control or key shortcuts that was before she passed away though so there are currently no elderly individuals uh around me uh both uh all of my grandparents have passed away and i don't work in an office right now Uh, sure. Ferb says, my grandfather always asks me to, quote, fix his phone when he forgets his email password or, like, deletes his email. It's so frustrating. <laughs> I can understand that. And don't worry, it's okay, it's okay, David. I'm not, like, upset or anything. Oh. It is what it is. They have passed away. So, they're not here anymore. And unfortunately, my, my grandmother did not, uh, want to be around any of us really after my grandfather died so she was really upset oh man i can smell the shepherd's pie downstairs i'm so hungry i can't wait to have some and i'll get to do that soon because i think i'm finished <sighs> with the tits of the worm for now i will ink and color yeah, him huh Oh, I think he said be right back. I'm not sure. Let's scale him up. It's gonna be one of our larger chibis. Because he's got all that all that tail. All this long cat. There we go. Put this one over here so he can be seen. There we go. Alrighty. Sorry about that. I'm back. It's all good. Uh, I believe that uh, he is all done. And by he, I mean she, because this is based off of my cat. And my cat is a girl. Uh, so I believe that she's all done. Just got to... Maybe I'll put a bow on this cat. <laughs> I don't know. Or a bow on the tail. I'll have to think about that. Probably fine as is, though. Ooh, really, really excellent work, I must say. Thank you. So let's see, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow is the day after today. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, let's see. Tomorrow is the Snallygaster! Oh, I'm looking forward to that. That thing is a weird bunch of doodad. If I remember correctly. Let's type in that and have a look at it, Snallygaster. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it's part bird, part octopus, part frog. Oh boy, it's got an awful lot of uh, tentacles coming out of its face. Alright. So we will uh, we will be looking at that tomorrow. 
<laughs> Brogdopus as verb. Yes. Le Brogdopus. Uh, so. Let's wrap up. I want to thank everybody for stopping by. I want to thank uh, David and also Mike who went downstairs to get food. Uh, thank you for keeping me company. <coughs> uh, I hope that I will see everybody tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you had fun here. Uh, as always, my socials are underneath the video. Uh, it includes links to uh, to my social accounts like Twitter. It also includes links to things like my Patreon. Uh, well, my Patreon rewards now include uh, access to uh, the Discord channel, where you can come and chat with me and everybody else. And higher tiers include uh, things like access to videos uh, earlier than other people uh, and free art. So... I hope that if you are interested, you will give that a look. So, anyway, again, hope y'all had fun. Hope I'll see you tomorrow. Hope you have a good rest Bye. of your night. I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of my followers over on Patreon and give a special shout out to Jack Fox, Old Monster, Dizarin, and Revolution72. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. I'd also like to give a big thank you to everyone else watching. If you enjoyed the video, let me know with a like and a comment. Be sure to have a look at the other videos on my channel and subscribe so you never miss a new one. Links to my Patreon, Twitch, and all my other socials are in the description below the video. I hope I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!